What's up, Internet? This is Rambling Josh, and you're watching another episode of Let's Play Ogre Battle 64. So today we have a whole bunch of running around to do, uh, now that we have finished the Blue Basilica. And the reason is because it all starts here, in Cremona. One of the towns within the Blue Basilica. So let's check it out. Not the shop, the stronghold. It just seems kind of strange seeing an angel talking to someone else inside of a church. Like they're just talking to this angel like they're anyone else. That was kind of a jerk move. I have no idea what that is, but sure. It's a side quest. I can't say no. Oh, a jewelry box. I mean, why would I say no to a side quest? Like, the last side quests I did resulted in me getting, like, a dragoon and a lich. Surely this can't compare to that. But anyways, uh, next we want to go to Final Canyon. Where is Colonel Canyon? There it is. So, an area investigation. And we want to go to Mulam. So, let us do that. So, I don't know why we're supposed to come to Bulam and how you're supposed to find that out, but this is in fact where we go. L, huh? I wonder if there's like a note on the jewelry box or something that we're supposed to look at. Um, package for Gil, though. No, no notes. I guess you're just supposed to either use the internet or trial and error. Well, I guess there is uh, an official strategy guide for this game, so... Here's that. And next we go to L, Zenobian Border. So, where's L? Way the heck down there. Although, really, back when we were doing the Zenobian border, maps were pretty small back then. In comparison, they're freaking huge these days. Alright, let's see what's up in L. That's not Grelda. Gelda. Really? Really? Just another pointless step in the chain. Well, I guess we're looking somewhere in the highlands of Sothon then. So, that's over here, actually. Highlands of Sothon. No, not the Hugo report. I don't expect Hugo to tell me where Gelda lives. Okay, so we are looking for Tristel, which is right there. Okay. Well, let's just send Magnus over there. Don't need to worry with about my Seraphs. 
Okay. Is she actually here? She sure gets around, jeez. Oh, she's dead. Of course she's dead. That shouldn't be surprising at all. Really? Well, who else would it be for? Well, what am I supposed to do with it then? I'll bring it back to the dude. Maybe I'll get some jewelry from it. Better get a frickin' reward for running all over the frickin' world. That would be the wrong button. Okay. And back to Blue Basilica. And back way the hell over here to Cremona. Okay, let's see what to see. See, see what to see. Let's see what this old man has to say after this wild goose chase. Honestly, I'm surprised he hasn't died by the time from the time it took us to get back here. Sob, sob. I don't know. Aren't old people usually more emotional? Oh, really? So, it sounds like we have a component for another super secret ultra, ultra, ultra mega class. I cannot talk today at all. It says we, it allows us to change female characters into a princess, huh? Well, let us find a female character. Say, let's pick someone else. Say Katrina. I don't see any princess. Well, the reason for that is there is actually another step in the process. First off, we have to go to Alba. Now this step that I'm about to do is actually something that we could have done at basically any point throughout the entire game. I just never felt that there was any point in doing it until there was actually the time. Wait, Alba? No, that's not the right, right place at all. Derp. I, I was just thinking, Alba's where you start, but that's not where the first mission is. The first mission is Ten of Planes. Okay, let's try that again. So what we got to do is we need a female unit leader, and we need to bring them up to who? We need to bring her to Bordeaux. Once we arrive here, we enter the stronghold as always. Oh, really? Fifteenth of every month, huh? So, if you didn't catch that, she basically said, uh, we can buy silk in Dardanelles on the 15th of every month and we can have it made into a beautiful dress uh, in a uh, building on the Ten Plains. Huh. Well that's convenient, it just happens to be the 15th. So, head on over to Melfi. See what we got here. 
a peddler standing inside of a castle with no wares. You gotta love the glitchy emulator. But anyways, he sells us a bolt of silk, which is what we are here for. Not Alba, but Ten of Planes is where we want to go next. Once again. Now, I believe Bilney is. Are you Bilney? You're Jad. Are you Bilney? You're Bilney. Okay, Let's see what they can do with this bolt of silk. She is also inside, or he is also inside of a castle. Yes, please. A little expensive for our address, but I guess you know, that's the price you have to pay for high fashion. Well, what if I want the dress for someone else? Make you look like a princess, huh? And that's just what it's going to do. And that is the last component we need for a princess. So, just to recap. The items that you need in order to make a princess are... You need a pure white dress. You need... Oh, I guess it's considered an accessory. You need a dream tiara, and you need... Where is it? A battle fan, which apparently we have five of them. So, no lack of battle fan. So, I actually want to change my poor little sorceress, who's been a sorceress for so ridiculously long. This has been her fate all along. See, the thing about a princess is a princess needs to be lawful. And a princess is actually the only lawful spellcaster in the game. Because both sirens and liches, well, unless you count priests, but sirens and liches are all chaotic. So she's been stuck as a lawful sorceress for the entire game. But she has now become a princess and fulfilled her destiny. Now an interesting thing here is, you may have noticed, changing my uh, leader uh, to the princess significantly increases the unit attack power for, um, well, for the unit. But if I do that for any other unit, it doesn't change. Because leaders, your leader doesn't necessarily increase your attack power. And there's a very good reason for that. Let's take a look at some of the characters in this unit. This Deanna gets four attacks in the back row. Leia gets three attacks. Troy gets three attacks. Europia gets three attacks. The big thing that sets a princess apart from every other character in the game is when she is the leader of a unit, every other character in the unit gets one extra attack per round. So that's why I've uh, kind of created this group of misfits. Uh, it's a group of characters that have, for the most part, been fairly me mediocre, but with an extra attack every round, they should actually be quite good. And so that is the, the role of the princess. And she's been a sorceress all this time because princesses themselves are casters. So it's been a, a plan a long time in the making. So, let's see. Let's give her something else. I guess a Misty Coat works. And I'm also going to give her Tempest, which is the spell book that I just recently got. Hmm. Makes me think. Didn't I get a dress at some point?
Maybe I was thinking of something else. Well, whatever. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate the power of the princess. And more ways than one. I'm going to demonstrate what a princess can do, but I'm also going to demonstrate what the spell book I just gave her can do. See, that spell book is Tempest, which um, is what is known as a, I believe it's called a Draconite spell book. Holy jeez, five black knights. Well, they should not be a problem. There are four different types of Draconite spell books, and they're all absurdly powerful. You will soon see why. Three damage? Jeez, Europea, you're a beast, even before you got three attacks. Here is Tempest. What the extravagant spell animation. And 70 damage to everything. Draconite spellbooks hit every enemy in the group for uh, even damage. It doesn't do reduced damage to the corners. It's full damage to everything. It's pretty freaking ridiculous. Although, if you're going to use them a lot, you may want to turn off spell animations because the spell animations for these things are rather long. So yeah, they're... Draconite spells are pretty good. You know, you, you put a, a caster with a Draconite book in basically any group, and that group instantly becomes like a thousand percent better. I mean, it's like uh, the Seraph's Jihad attack, except like six times stronger, something ridiculous like that. And this is with the princess. I mean, that's not my strongest spellcaster out there. I mean, if we were to give Tempest to Saradin, 59. She has 49 with her Tempest. Uh, give it to Viridia, it would be 58. 53, although Liches get three attacks. So, yeah. This unit all of a sudden became very kind of ridiculous. And truth be told, I'm actually not going to use Tempest because for one, it's kind of way too powerful, and for two, a spell animation is way too long. So I don't want to abuse it, and I don't want to waste time. So I'm not going to use it. But anyways, uh, that is the fruit of our labor for all of that. So with that, I will catch you on the next episode of Let's Play Ogre Battle 64.